you also have to skip or uh, blaze through um, some of these. Um, so uh, the official uh, talk title is uh, Optimization Techniques for EVM Implementation. As you can see from, this is the proof that the title is too long because it didn't fit into the box there. Uh, so I think the better one would be uh, how to build a fast EVM. Just if you're holding it, just like that. Yeah, I, I, I can't actually hear like high pitch. Cover it for a while. Okay, okay, thanks. <laughs> um, but to be precise, uh, I think we have to mention interpreter in the title. So this is not a talk about how to do fancy stuff with uh, just in time compilers, ahead of time compilers, or any, anything like that. The, the other thing I, I'm going to talk, uh, talk about here. Uh, will be related to uh, pretty much portable code and, and I think uh, really want, uh, nothing uh, of that would use advanced techniques in, from gen generic uh, interpreter optimization space. Uh, my name is uh, Pablo Belica and I, for, for many years I do EVMs. Um, so let me go through uh, briefly through uh, like my history of uh, working with EVM. I started uh, quite early, even before the Ethereum has launched. Uh, and the first project I was working on with my colleague uh, was EVMJet. So it was it was a project that was supposed to prove that EVM can uh, be executed fast, fast, and uh, it was working by trans uh, translating. EVM bytecode to LLVM IR, and then using LLVM uh, tooling, it was uh, it was compiling that to a machine code, loaded to, uh, loaded to memory, and then it was executed as a native code. Uh, so the product died around uh, 2017. Uh, I think it was mostly not interested in working on it and like using it, uh, although it proved it a long time ago. It's that's doable, but I think the big controversy about can we actually use a uh, compilation pipeline uh, on like a consensus critical uh, <coughs> critical uh, yeah, platforms. Um, but what actually came out, out of the EV engine product was EVMC, which was attempt to, and still is, attempt to, to define the uh, low level uh, API for EVMs and it's actually for both sides, for EVMs and the clients that use these. And if one of the sites implemented, it can use uh, like different implementations of EVMs, uh, more more like uh, a way of as as plugins work. Um, and the third third point here is uh, is, is Aleph project, which originally was the CPP Ethereum, and uh, it has like big C++ code base. Uh, it was one of the free implementations that started before, like as was the original Ethereum implementations. <coughs> but there, actually, we, we also used the EVMC API and packed the EVM implementations from there into into this API. So it's it's available as a as a plugin nowadays. And the last product is EVM1, which I started uh, last year. And many of the things, most of the things I'm going to present here are coming from from discoveries in this project. Um, so EVM1 is <coughs> is is interpreter implementing uh, EVM. And uh, the 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 key differences are. It has pretty pretty good 256-bit uh, uh, integer implementation, and uh, it has also experimental, uh, efficient, different way of, of counting gas and checking <coughs> other uh, constraints, and has like many other uh, uh, optimizations, kind of like micro micro optimizations, which are related either to C++ or maybe not, but. Uh, I'm going to talk about the, the first two points here. And these, both of these were actually released in version 0.1 uh, some time ago. So uh, they were done uh, on the same time. Mm. 
So uh, when we start with the uh, when we want to start with uh, the the two five six integer implementation. Uh, so we can say it's it's critical from uh, EVM point of view. It's like this this the the arithmetics uh, EVM uses. So actually, I was kind of like not sure that this the real case. It's like uh, if it's maybe it's it's important, but maybe it's not so so much. That was my expectations. But um, yeah, by by coincidence, actually. Um, Recently, you had an uh, option to actually place the original implementation of, uh, of integer uh, in, in RF interpreter, which previously was using Boost multi-precision. Um, so Boost is a commonly known C++ library, some kind of uh, standard library extension, and it's commonly used in many C++ projects. Um, so I think it's it's nothing to be to be worried about in terms of quality and, and performance, uh, but we 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 had option to replace that implementation with int x implementation, which is uh, which is the implementation I actually did for uh, for EVM one project, and uh, at this point, big thanks to some internet guy called Vistak who actually contributed all these changes. Uh, and the results look more or less like, more, more or less like that. So um, this is like a zoom of, of the benchmark, uh, small set of benchmarks I did, and um, we'll, we'll going back to that in the end. But simply by replacing a big integer implementation, uh, we can get uh, around three times uh, speed improvement here. Uh, this is a summary of, of some benchmarks I will, I will show later. So it's like geometric mean of, of a small set of days. Uh, to, to only have uh, some kind of idea how, how the average uh, usage uh, of the EVM uh, performs here. Uh, but uh, if we go back to, uh, to talking about uh, this 256 integer implementation, and if you can refer uh, probably to very overused uh, uh, 80, 20, 20 row. So for if you want to implement uh, integer, uh, uh, it actually works most, m mostly like that. So 80% so of your struggle is, is around division, which is uh, pretty much complex to do. And anything else you want to implement there, uh, it's pretty much straightforward. Uh, so by division here, I also mean uh, reminder of the division or like modular operations and, and so on, because like the results of these are actually coming from from the same algorithm. Uh, uh, but like uh, if we like uh, considering like short 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 time we have here, if I can give a quick let's say hints how how like uh, how the, I think uh, the performing uh, 256 bit precision integer uh, implementation should look like. So, so these are some, uh, some, some guidelines I have. Um, so first of all, we can forget about any, any kind of fancy algorithm that show up somewhere in the, in the, in the space. So anyone knows like uh, uh, multiplication algorithm like that can save to some multiplications of the words. Any names? Okay, good. Because they are not needed actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, they work uh, at at point when you actually have big, big, big numbers to to multiply and, and so on. Uh, for the, the 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 precision is actually quite quite small precision actually. Comparing to, to, to big big numbers in general, so 
none of them are needed, and I, I'm pretty sure that that's correct uh, statement. <coughs> but what I also did in, 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 in X is I actually ignored all these like easy cases to handle at first, like when many implementations uh, do. So even if you have option to uh, figure out that the numbers you are multiplying are small, like they within 64 bits, I think it's not worth it to, to actually handle this case separately because like it disturbs all the other algorithm and like you have additional conditions and branches to check uh, and, and pretty well, uh, pretty much it works great uh, if you uh, if you just uh, only focus on uh, uh, 256 uh, bits. And the third thing I want to mention here is like, uh, try f first, first optimizations you can do is try to avoid uh, dynamic memory allocation. So if you use any kind of generic uh, multi big number uh, uh, library that actually can handle arbitrary precision, uh, which are not fixed on this compile time and, and anything like that. They will definitely use like mem mem dynamic memory allocation because like it's it's unknown during compilation like what, what the size will be. Um, so uh, if there's option to use fixed like fixed precision, but uh, at this point I think it's worth it because that saves you the memory allocation. Uh, some some libraries offer that. Uh, but I think it's uh, it's all. I think we should go further here, and uh, it's also like uh, I'm sure I can easily explain that with visualization. But um, many of the big number implementations actually have keep the the number of words they will later have in the, in the in the, the the number representation as a kind of. Uh, uh, additional uh, information stored in the type, which makes the, the type uh, bigger by this additional uh, item. And actually, that's uh, so it makes it more or less 20, in, it's, uh, in our case, makes it more or less 25% uh, bigger. And I think from like even the, the memory access patterns, it's kind of important to not have it because if you have. Uh, type which is like the minimal uh, possible size, which is 32 bytes. It nicely fits into cache lines and so on. And when you access stack items of this size, it it performs much faster. And uh, the, the the fifth uh, suggestion is try to understand that CPU has some kind of special instructions. Let's say I mean they are not like obviously available from the high-level languages. Uh, so they can actually speed up addition and other operations and have either high high precision multiplication or can actually give you like a high part of the multiplication and so on. Um, and I think at least you should be aware that when, when you come like build even uh, when you build a code in, in high-level language it's good to know if, if either compiler can give you access to these by using uh, well-known patterns, how to access them, or you might need to, to use some intrinsics to, to, for example, get access to high-precision multiplication that your CPU probably have. And that was last thing in terms of the vision. I mean, I was actually struggling with the vision for, for a long time. Uh, because I mostly had to learn most of these. And, but this paper really helped me here. So this is a paper coming from GMP library, which is like a well-known uh, big number in, uh, implementation. Um, and actually, it gives you like straight away, I mean, maybe it's not straight away because the form is, it's, it's described in this like mathematical form, so have, you still have to translate it into code. But I think it, goes, it gives you almost full recipe how to actually implement that. And I did it. Still, GMP is faster here, uh, but like not by some margin because maybe they use uh, 
well, they definitely use assembly directly as a as a way of speeding up. So maybe just like somehow compiler fault that it cannot it cannot uh, it cannot like optimize the same way like some people did some time ago. Uh, but yeah, it was very hard to do. Uh, but if you like still a bit lost, so my suggestion is if you if you have if you don't have other options, try to actually port uh, the my the my code to other codes. I think it would yeah. So what's the license on it? Uh, it's Apache two. Awesome. Uh, so I mean by porting I I don't mean use it directly. I think uh, in this case this all this uh, accessing C code by C API I think it would, would won't work very well. Uh, but we can try that. But by porting, I mean you can try to just copy it to other languages and make it build and try to actually use the same same patterns if, if, if you not, don't know where to start from. Um, yeah, so that was mostly about uh, the, this, this integer stuff. Uh, if any quick questions now, I can, I can handle them. Uh, but we, we will continue. Um, uh, yeah. How big is the library? Uh, I'm not sure exactly, but it can be, I think, between 1,000 and 2,000, I think, something like that. Um, but this also, like, design is like, uh, is, this is done by using generics and, like, kind of, uh, how to explain it, like, recursive design. So, like, you build. Five six uh, operations out of uh, one hundred twenty eight operations. So, and like I think like a lot of lot of like C plus plus craft around the place make it make it difficult. I mean like it increases my code, but I think it's 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 not really complicated except for the vision. Um, yeah. So let's let's go to the to the um, So well, it's it's about. Uh, it's a small innovation here, an experimental way of uh, counting gas and, and doing other things. I actually wanted to, to make it in, in written form, and there is a link to a draft or article I'm writing about that to explain it, like maybe to do it later. Uh, so I just wanted to leave, leave a pointer to it. Um, uh, but like, if we if we consider it how EVM execution works, um, so it actually need to do a, to do it in, in two phases. So the first one uh, at least needs to check where are the valid jump destinations, and in EVM we actually put a bit more work in, into this uh, pre-processing phase before the execution starts. Uh, so I will try to explain that by example. So we have a code, uh, EVM bytecode assembly here. But you don't actually need to understand what it does. Actually, I tried to do it a bit like do something, but in the end, I realized there's one mistake here, so it's actually pretty stupid now. Uh, but anyway, what we want to do, uh, and we will try to do what what the, the preprocessing uh, step is doing for, for EVM1. So we want to identify basic blocks. And basic blocks are the sequence of code that are kind of executed uninterruptedly. Um, and this is coming from the, the, the compiler construction and basic blocks are the, <coughs> the sequence of instruction that are for sure executed in order and then the basic blocks are kind of linked by jumps between them. Um, so I'm yeah. here. So one file should be the uh, start of the basic block, right? The, it does not start with jump gas. Yeah, but still it's, it's yeah, that's that's a good question, but yeah, so it, it will be seen in the moment. Um, okay, so, okay you will um, I think you ask it like where the basic block starts and you write that this is also the start of basic block. So we actually looking here for the term terminator instruction that actually and the basic block, so either by, by being a jump or it actually terminates the EVM execution entirely, but it actually doesn't matter in this place. And the second a, a group of interesting instructions actually have one, only one 
uh, it's, a, it's a jump desk which starts the basic blocks. And by using that, we can split this into basic blocks. This is like visualization of that with, with some gaps. So yeah, so we have like two splits here because uh, this one instruction is after after the the terminator instructions, and here actually it's the both the both uh, conditions are applied in the same case. Right. But can it, we can also find examples where jump this is not preceded by any terminator, but still uh, it's 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 creates a split. Okay. So, can I have like one minute? Yeah, one minute. Okay. And what we do here, we actually uh, can <coughs> then having basic block, we can pre-compute the base gas cost of these instructions. But we can also uh, uh, pre-compute some uh, stack requirements for that. Uh, and having uh, Having all of this, these three values, uh, during execution we can check these conditions only per basic block and then it, it doesn't have to be checked anymore uh, during execution. So this saves a lot of, a lot of time uh, during interpretation because we pre computed some information and we don't have to check it for basic instructions as, as addition, multiplication, and so on. Uh, so all these three checks the base gas cost check, stack underflow, stack overflow can be done only at the beginning of the basic blocks. And then we can safely assume they are all checked and happily execute uh, further instructions. And this mostly, uh, yeah, this mostly uh, is based on the, this, this, uh, this fact that EVM exception are not uh, are indistinguishable between the types of what actually uh, the error happened. I mean, the, the, the calls do not know this information. They revert all the changes and consume the gas. Yeah, thank you. Uh -huh.